Hello, this is Alan Elliott, and this is SAS Essentials, Mastering SAS for Data Analytics, 3rd Edition. This is Chapter 19, Part 2, Creating Custom Graphs. As with the other tutorials, if you'd like to follow along, the data files can be downloaded at this location. Let's begin. Okay, this is section 19.4 for creating stacked bar charts. We're continuing from the previous tutorial. So another often used type of bar chart is a stacked bar chart. But to create stacked bar charts, you don't use the group option. So let's take a look at that. We're do, you're doing an example 19.7 from the text. And we're going to open up the file called agraph7.sas. And you can see the code there. And in particular, I want to point out the red, the code I have in red, which is subgroup equal arrive. Notice we have a subgroup option here, but there is no group option, as we had in the previous examples uh, in the previous tutorial. So what we get now is instead of uh, the bars side by side, they're stacked one on top of the other. So for instance, in female, we have three bars stacked on top of each other. So by not including the group option, the bars are stacked rather than each group being a separate bar. Let's make a few other changes. Uh, in this case, let's uh, change the color to various shades of gray. So gray AA is a dark gray, whereas gray EE is a light gray and various other shades we could choose. Uh, if we do this and rerun it, then we get uh, the chart in uh, versions or, or shades of gray, as you can see here. And that might be, uh, uh, be handy if you're creating a graph, for instance, for a journal article that only uses black and white. Let's put the group option back in the code just to see how that would affect things. And so you can see here in red, I put group equal arrive back into the code and rerun it. And again, now the stacks, the, the bars are not stacked anymore, but instead they're side by side. Let's continue with this example by opening up the uh, program file uh, agraph7a, uh, and this adds some additional code. First of all, we see the legend1 code where we're defining a legend that's going to appear at the top inside left of the graph, and we're defining an axis option here, axis1, uh, that's going to define uh, the axis on the uh, vertical axis. And then we apply those in the proc G chart where it says legend equal. We're, we're saying the legend is going to be, uh, we want it to use the definition called legend one. And for the R axis, we're going to want it to use the uh, axis called axis one. And we're also defining outside equal freak, which tells SAS to put the frequencies for each bar outside the bar. So again, here we have our results. As you can see, uh, the numbers outside each bar, 6, 5, 38, 28, those are the frequencies that appear outside the bar. And then the legend is in the upper left, gender, and we define male and female as the uh, items in that uh, um, key. And then on the uh, vertical axis count, we see it's in red and it's uh, uh, at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle from normal, which makes it look a lot nicer. So let's look more closely at this uh, code where we first define legend one. The across equal one uh, makes the uh, uh, key uh, with the items just one across. So if I go backwards, uh, we see male and female. That's the uh, where we're defining the across. If we didn't have it there, they would be side by side. So by uh, across equal one, it means to put them all in one column. Uh, the label is gender, the position top, inside, left. Uh, the uh, values male and female are going to use the height of 1, which is the normal uh, default height. And then access 1, we're defining with, again, an angle of 90 degrees, uh, red with a height of 2, so it's going to be a little bit larger. And the font, Swiss bold, and the uh, value of that legend is count. And then we define them, uh, or we apply them, as we said earlier, uh, legend equal legend 1, r axis equal axis 1, and then also we included outside equal freak. 
Now, play around with this uh, uh, example. Uh, first of all, take out the across equal one option and rerun it and see how this changes the legend. Also change the legend position to the top inside right and run the program to see how that changes things. Uh, and, you know, play around with some of the other things. You can play around with the uh, colors uh, and the height of the various um, uh, labels and just see uh, how uh, each of those uh, changes the, the uh, resulting graph. And that's how you learn uh, how you can uh, change your graph uh, into what you want it to, be, uh, to become uh, for a presentation or publication or whatever you want. All right, let's continue with uh, section 19.5, creating mean bars using G-chart. So an often used analysis graphic is one that displays means as bars with error bars around the mean, indicating a level of variability. So this is different. Instead of displaying counts as the bars, we're displaying means as the bars. And PROC G-chart can produce these graphs with a little help. Uh, the next example produces a bar chart with error bars representing means by group. So let's take a look at how this would be, uh, work. Uh, example 19.8 from the text. Uh, open up the program file uh, agraph8.sas and I just want to point out two particular items here. Well, actually three. Uh, the ones in red, type equal mean, uh, indicates that we're going to, uh, the bars are going to actually be means. The CLM equal 99 uh, displays a 99% confidence of error bars on top. And then the error bar equal top uh, is actually what puts the error bars on the top of each bar. So here we can see the result of that, uh, where we have uh, uh, the type equal mean. And uh, in, in fact, we're putting the mean inside, sort of like what we did the frequencies outside earlier. But where this graph, uh, the bars are actually the means. So we see the first one is the mean of 20.9. Uh, we uh, created the, the confidence interval 99% error bar. Uh, and it's on top. And you can see that uh, how those error bars look then on top of each bar. So here are some of the options we use we can, uh, that you can, can use uh, for these. And that is the pattern statement we've seen, axis, uh, R axis is the response axis that we've seen before, whereas axis, uh, M axis is the midpoint axis, um, and various things there. We've seen inside mean, uh, CLM equal 99. We can change that to 95 if we want, or whatever. Uh, we can put the error bar on top, uh, and various things there that you can, you can look at, and they're uh, also listed in the text. So let's make a few changes here. Uh, in this case, we're going to uh, define some major and minor axes. So here in axis 1, uh, we have things that we've already noticed before, A equal 90, etc. The things we haven't seen is major equal, uh, color equal blue, height equal 3, width equal 2. Now that's going to define the major axis uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, output, as you can see to the right, where we have uh, these axes in blue. Uh, and then we have minor axes, and we're going to have four minor axes be uh, between them. So that makes sense because uh, you'd go 10, 11, 12, 13, 4, or actually it's about 2, 10, uh, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So we have four uh, uh, tick points between each of the major uh, axes. And you, can, you could choose uh, whatever you wanted there, uh, but probably choose something that makes sense. All right, so uh, try these changes. Change the error bar specification to both uh, instead of the top and rerun and see how that changes things. Take off the error bar type and CLM statements and change the inside mean to outside equal freak. Uh, and again, rerun and observe these changes. Again, uh, play around with the various options here and that's a way to learn uh, how you uh, want, uh, can create a graph uh, with the options that you need for your particular uh, analysis. All right, now let's look at uh, uh, section 19.6, creating box charts. So this section provides information on uh, methods for creating and enhancing box plots. A simplified syntax for this is PROC box plot. And we've seen uh, similar PROCs before where we have the define the data options. And then we have a plot statement, which is the dependent variable by the grouping variable uh, and some options if we want them and some other statements. 
Uh, so the plot option is required, for example, a typical simple use, and again, group must be uh, sorted. We would have proc box, box plot data equal my data, plot height by group. And so notice here we have a group option, and that has to be sorted before we can actually run the box plot. Uh, so here's an example of box plot, plot code. First of all, we're going to sort, in this case, by cylinders. Uh, we're going to do a proc box plot, and the plot is going to be highway miles per gallon by cylinders. And then we have some options here where we're going to fill the box with light green uh, and then uh, the run state. And here are some other common statements for proc box plot, as you can see there. The only one that's different uh, is the plot statement that we just talked about. Some uh, common options for the uh, box plot plot statement, uh, and that is uh, C boxes equal color, C box fill equal color. Uh, you should know how to do those. The notches option that we'll see in an example uh, comes from a, uh, a type of box plot defined by McGill, Tukey, and Kalarsen. Uh, and then the box style specifies the style of the box plot. Well, again, we'll see an option here, schematic, skeletal, and so forth. All right, let's look, look at uh, example 19.9. In this case, open up the file called agraph9. Uh, we're going to reset all the options and then uh, turn the ODS graphics off, which you may need for the colors to come out right. And we're going to uh, sort the data, cars data, uh, by cylinders. And then we're going to plot highway miles per gallon by cylinders using a C box fill of light green, where cylinders is greater than one. We're leaving off uh, uh, engines that don't have any cylinders in them, which are, are worth a, a few of the Mazda versions. All right, so here's the resulting box plot. We can see cylinders 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Uh, and we have box plots for each one. Uh, and notice here that the color that we're giving here is light green. Make a few changes here. We're going to change the uh, fill to a light uh, blue. Uh, we're going to make the box plots black. We're going to use schematic box plots. We're going to add the notches. And again, where cylinders is greater than one. And the schematic option causes outliers to be displayed as values greater than the absolute value of 1.5 times the interquartile range. range. So you can see here uh, we have some box plots and then on some of them we have little dots and that indicates that there are uh, uh, outliers in these uh, particular ones. So for four cylinders there's a few cars that have, get better gas mileage than we would uh, normally expect. Uh, now, if we can make a couple of changes here, where we uh, in, in red, where we say box style equals schematic ID, which is going to put the actual ID for each of these, and we can see now why some of the four-cylinder models uh, had better gas mileage. They tend to be the hybrid versions, uh, as we can see there. We can add an inset group statement before the where statement. So we say inset group mean. Uh, 5.1, that's the format, min, max, and the header, mean, and extreme. So what that's going to do uh, is it's going to add this uh, uh, table at the top that's going to give us the means and extremes. So we have the means, the minimum, and the maximum for each of the items here. And so we can see that for four cylinders, uh, the mean is 30.5, the minimum uh, miles per gallon is 19, whereas the maximum is 51. Okay, so the finished code for the box plot example uh, is as follows. And you can see now this adds in all of the options uh, that we discussed in the previous slides. Okay, let's look at section 19.7, going deeper, creating an interactive bar chart using ODS. So a useful feature of the ODS system that we introduced in Chapter 8 is its ability to create interactive links within graphs with HTML code. To do this, we create a variable that creates a hypertext link and then apply that link to a portion of the graph. And the following examples will show how that works. First, let's look at hands-on example 19.10. So open up the program file agraph10.sas, and we'll see here we have a simple bar chart, proc g chart, using some data. We're using the hbar uh, group. 
We have the discrete option there, but it's really not necessary at this moment. But when we run this, it creates a simple horizontal bar chart. Notice we have three groups, A, B, and C. Now suppose that for each group represented here, A, B, and C, we want to make a, a set of background statistics or associate a set of background statistics with each of the bars. We can do this by associating a link to each bar on the graph to a separate web page. Thus, each bar becomes a web page link. And when we click on that bar on the graph, it opens up an HTML page. The code in the next few slides uh, creates an HTML file that contains the report from Proc Means that we're going to associate with the various groups. Note that the HTML report is saved in the, uh, as a file named gpa.html and that it contains the information about group A. So here is uh, that code. So here we have ODS HTML path equal SAS data. And the body, that's the name of the file we're going to create, is gpa.html. So that means group A.html. And then the proc means is a normal proc means where group equal A. So this is going to create a report for all of, all of the variables uh, in some data where group equal A. And this is what it looks like. So we can see the summary for group A, the mean statement, uh, produces uh, uh, the variable age and the time variables uh, and the uh, various statistics for that uh, information. So that's a simple report we're going to create. Now let's move on to example 19.11. Uh, in this case, open up the program file agraph11.sas. Now we've already created the uh, group A uh, report here. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you should create the uh, similar reports for group B and C. I'll leave that up to you on your own. It's simply change the A to a B or a C to create the similar uh, uh, statements here. So we should have uh, three different HTML files, a gpa.html, gpb, and gpc. Now what we're going to do is we're going to link those files to a uh, link uh, that we're going to use in proc gchart. And we do that with an if statement. So if, if group A, if group equal A, then we're going to set the variable named HTML link to a hypertext reference, which is gpa.html. So we're uh, going to say that uh, this link is going to take us to a file called gpa.html. And similar uh, 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 references for group B and C. And then we need to create, uh, define uh, some other ODS HTML information. So the path, which is the path where the data is located, the body, which is the body of the G chart, uh, and then the G path. Notice that's different. We've got a path and a G path. The G path is for the graphics option. And again, it's the same uh, option and it's the same location in this case. And now we're going to use proc G chart. Uh, hbar group, and we're going to add an option here, uh, the HTML option, and we're going to say equal to whatever variable we created, in this case HTML length, and what that's going to do is associate each bar with the variable called HTML length. So uh, we're, notice here that we set HTML length uh, with a length of 40 because it could be a long HTML uh, 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 page name, as we're going to see in a minute. And we say if group equal A, then HTML uh, equal. And this H reference, as I said, was a hypertext uh, reference, which is an internet reference, which could go to any place on the internet. If you're on a live internet, it can go anywhere. Now we're uh, accessing local files, but you could, using the HTTP option, send the link uh, out to the real web. Uh, and so we've set up uh, the information here in this little piece of code. And then, additionally, we have the uh, HTML uh, path equal, as I mentioned. Uh, that's where the data is located. The body uh, uh, is the uh, name of the file uh, for the G chart. And the path, the G path, uh, associates uh, with, the length, uh, with the links. So we need all that information uh, defined. And then we have our proc G chart. And we say hbar gp, and then with the option HTML equal HTML link, to associate uh, what link we're going to use uh, for each bar. Now when we run that program, 
we get uh, a bar chart that looks basically, in fact, identical to the one we've seen before. Uh, it looks no different so far. But if you move your mouse on top of the A bar, you'll notice it'll change to uh, whatever uh, your uh, computer has, but typically a little pointing finger. Uh, and if you click on that bar, uh, a new page comes up, uh, and that is the summary group for A. So point to the A bar, click on it, and you get the summary group for A in a new web page. You can go back to the graph by using the back arrow, which is uh, at the top of your screen uh, on the page that displays the, uh, the report. Now, just to show you that the links we are, we've created are actual HTML links, uh, change group C to the HTML length, uh, and you can use any web page that you want, but I just used uh, HTTP colon slash slash www.cnn.com uh, and again you can use any, any one you want but rerun it and this time click on the C bar and observe the results it should go if you're on live internet it should go to the web page you've designated all right so now let's move to a new section 19.8 again a going deeper section in this case for SG plots starting with SAS 9.2 a new way of creating high quality graphs was introduced these are called statistical graphics procedures, so, so that's why it's called SG plots. These include SG plot, SG scatter, SG panel, and it may include others uh, as they add new ones to it. Uh, so we're going to illustrate the use of SG plot in this section. An advantage of these plots is they can be easily created in standard graphical file types, such as uh, JPEG or TIFF. The basic syntax for SG plot is, uh, is most uh, very similar to other uh, procs, proc SG plot, data equal whatever data name. Now we have a plot statements that are required and then slash some options. Okay, let's look at this SG plot syntax. So we have to have at least one plot statement uh, in the SG plot uh, syntax here or the code. So in this case, we would have proc SG plot, for instance, histogram age. So that means we want to create a histogram using the variable age. Uh, we can add other uh, plots to the same uh, uh, procedure here. So we could add a density plot. Uh, the default is a normal plot, but we could add another plot statement by simply adding the word density age. So now it's going to create a histogram of age and then a, a density plot age, which is going to be superimposed on top of the histogram. Now there are some common plot statements for SGPlot. Uh, the plot statements include H bar or V bar, which uh, are the same as for G plot, uh, histogram, uh, scatter plot, density plot. Uh, we're going to have a key legend that we're going to see. We've said similar to what we've seen before. X axis options and Y axis options, and we're going to have a reg option that's going to specify a reg uh, regression line for scatter plots. So we'll see how that works in an upcoming example. So let's do uh, example 19.12. Open up the program file called sgplot1.sas. And notice here we're going to say plot G, uh, proc gplot data equal mysaslive.wound. So we're using the wound data set. And we're simply saying histogram sbp. And run that and we see that it creates a simple histogram for the variable sbp. It's a not, and, and also the, uh, the SG plots tend to be uh, very nicely uh, uh, defined and uh, designed uh, just by uh, with a simple uh, invocation of the plots, as we're going to see. Now, if we add uh, the density uh, code right after the histogram, density SBP, and then we're going to add a little bit here, slash type equal kernel to have a kernel plot. Uh, here we have now, we can see that the density plot now is uh, defined here for, again, for SBP, uh, which is a type of uh, curve that fits to uh, the data. We could optionally, instead of having a kernel plot, we could, or we could add now a density plot using type equal normal. So we still have the density plot on here that we've added earlier. But we're gonna add this code, and this time, this time we're gonna ask for a normal plot and we, see, we can see how the normal plot, which is red, uh, is a little bit different. The normal plot 
uh, uh, is based on the mean and standard deviation. Uh, and we can see again how that fits uh, the uh, curve a little bit different than the uh, kernel plot uh, uh, fits the data. So the final code that we just ran uh, would include the PROC SG plot and then a histogram, a density, and a density plot. So that's how we got the uh, plot in the uh, previous slide. Let's do another example, 19.13. Open up the program file called sgplot2.sas, uh, and this is simply going to create a bar chart. So here again, we're using the wound data, and in this case, we're saying the same h bar uh, is race underscore cat, race category. And again, we run that, and we see that it creates, again, a simple <coughs> horizontal bar chart. Now, the difference here, you'll notice from G chart, uh, is it doesn't have the statistics out here to the right. It simply creates uh, the bar chart. Nicely done, uh, but a little different than what G chart created. We can change it to a V-bar, v again, race category. Again, by, and optionally, say group equal gender. Uh, and as we saw in an early example in, in G-chart, where we could create stacked charts, this is a way of creating stacked charts uh, using SGplot. And so here we have um, male and female represented by the various colors for uh, the various race categories, black, other, and white. So we're going to add more code here, uh, where we're going to add the, a key legend, uh, slash location inside, uh, the position is going to be the top left, uh, and again, we're, we're going to define the x-axis label as race. So notice we're, we have some similar kinds of uh, options here in SGplot as was in Gchart, but they are different, and they produce a little bit different uh, results. Uh, SGplot tends to uh, automatically create what I, would, what I call a little bit better uh, uh, display uh, than Gchart, although we can, you can actually create pretty much exactly the same thing in either one. Now, there's some additional steps in this example that I would encourage you to uh, complete uh, by using the text. Now let's look at creating a scatter plot using sgplot. Uh, so in this case, we say sgplot, data equals SAS, whatever SAS file name, scatter, and then we have to define x as some variable and y as some variable. An option that's uh, helpful uh, is the uh, mark attributes. Uh, this option within the semicolon allows you to specify the type of symbol displayed at each point, along with its size and color. Again, uh, something you can similarly do uh, in uh, other options uh, within, our, uh, within uh, SAS that we've discussed earlier. So let's look at this example. Open up the program file sgplot3.sas. So here we have proc sgplot. Uh, using data called ANCOVA. Uh, and uh, in this case, we're going to have a scatter plot of x equal pretest and y equal post-test. So the ANOVA, ANCOVA data contains uh, variables pretest and post-test. Uh, this was uh, data collected on some individuals where they took a pretest and a post-test. We want to see maybe, uh, you know, are they related? So we are going to create a scatter plot of x by y. And so here we see at the bottom. We see pretest as the x-axis or the horizontal axis, and post-test as the vertical or uh, y-axis. And notice here that sgplot automatically creates a variable name for the y-axis uh, that uh, is in the 90 degree uh, uh, position here, which is nicer. Again, you can do that in uh, gchart, but uh, it just takes an extra, uh, extra step to do that. Now let's change the code a little bit by adding group equal method. Uh, similar to the uh, bar charts, uh, all we've done here is say group equal method. So what that's done is we have the same scatter plot. These are the same points, except now that there are groups. In fact, there are three groups, one, two, and three, and it assigned colors to them. So we have a red group, a blue group, and a green group. So we can see how they differ a little bit uh, by uh, examining the colors here. Again, we can uh, change the markers, so maybe they're a little bit more prominent and we can see them better. In this case, we're going to say mark attributes symbol equal triangle filled with the size of a, uh, 10 pixels. So in this case, it maintains the same colors we use, 
but now we have a little bit bigger and more pronounced uh, symbol uh, where we can see the differences between the three groups. We can add a legend, a uh, key legend, slash location equal inside, position top left, uh, and then uh, we added some labels for the X and Y axis. And again, you can see that all we've done here, similar to what we've done in G-Chart, is, is we've, we're adding uh, information to the graph, uh, customizing it so that it does uh, uh, gives the information uh, that we're interested in displaying. Another thing we can do is add a reg statement. So in this case, reg uh, x equal pretest, y equal post test, that's the same as the, uh, the uh, scatter plot, slash group equal method. So this is instead of plotting it, we're going to plot a regression line. But by, since we have the group equal method, it's actually going to plot three different uh, regression lines. So one regression line per group. So here we have the green group, the blue group, and the red group. And so we can, now can see uh, uh, better maybe the relationship uh, between the three groups. Uh, group, uh, the red group uh, tends to be on the bottom, the green group uh, tends to be on the top, and the blue in the middle. And here's the final code for uh, the examples we were working on. We have the scatter plot we would find. We created the marker attributes, we created the key legend, uh, we created uh, labels for the axes, and we also included a regression line option. Now let's look at a different kind of plot. Uh, in this case, example 19.15. Uh, in this uh, example, we're going to create what's called a bubble plot. So open up the program file called sgplot4.sas, and notice here we have proc sgplot using the coronary data. And the type of plot we're creating is a bubble plot. So here we have bubble, x equal age, y equal systolic blood pressure, and the size, which is going to be the size of the bubble, uh, is going to be uh, given by BMI, body mass index. And then we're going to set a transparency for the bubble, in this case 0.5. And finally, we're going to say x-axis grid, or I'm sorry, y-axis grid. So here is the result. So the y-axis grid simply put the, the little lines across the uh, graph for the y-axis. And then we see the bubbles here uh, where we have age versus systolic blood pressure. And uh, the largeness of each bubble has to do with BMI. So uh, the, maybe the result here is that uh, we can see how uh, systolic blood pressure uh, maybe begins to rise normally for uh, uh, people after about 50, 55. So uh, it's, it starts going up. It's pretty much stable from maybe 25 to 50, and then uh, it looks like it uh, has a trend upward. Uh, we Just to uh, play with this a little bit, change the transparency to 0.9 and run the code, change it to 0.1 and run the code, just to see how that works. Now let's change it back to 0.5 and add the option group equal insurance after transparency uh, and before the semicolon. Now rerun this and note the different colors by group. Uh, again, they're now going to be by insurance. Uh, another thing to look at is change the option in the bubble statement to transparency equal 0.5, fill attributes equal colors equal green, and that's going to change the color of the bubbles to green. So again, you can play with the various options here to see how you can uh, uh, customize this graph uh, to whatever you need. There are other ways uh, to customize these plots. Uh, in fact, there are at least two techniques you can use. One is called the annotation datasets method, and two is called the graph template language, or GTL uh, method. So the annotation dataset method is a, where you created, where there's a data set that can, contains graphic commands uh, that you would then apply to an existing plot, or you can create an entire customized plot with it. So it's really a language that you can use to create uh, custom pieces to a plot or an entire plot. GTL is a sub-language which is used to specify the details of how ODS graph is created. So when we asked for a, a G plot, for instance, or HBAR, we got specific colors by default and everything. All that can be changed within GTL. 
Uh, however, both these techniques are beyond the scope of this book. It's, it, those are more of an advanced uh, programming uh, kind of thing. But I just wanted to let you know that they were there in, in case that's something that uh, may be useful to you. So the summary of this chapter is that we described a small portion of the many graphical options available in SAS. However, we gave you a good grounding uh, in how you can use the various G-chart, G-plot, and SGplot uh, options here. So that should get you started. And, and frankly, 90-95% uh, of all the graphs that you'd ever need to create uh, is probably covered in uh, the ex uh, examples that we uh, have created in this one and the previous uh, tutorial on graphics. We're going to continue to Chapter 20, which is creating custom reports. Uh, so we will see you uh, in that uh, uh, new tutorial. So. Uh, Thanks for watching. If this was useful, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Thank you.